This week, Jet heads up to Canada and visits Pleasureway Industries, the maker of Pleasureway Class B motorhomes. Plus, we'll see a relatively easy modification that will help the ride and look of your travel trailer. And Terrell from Trailer Chicks shows us how to help reduce moisture and mildew in your RV. All this and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Class B motorhomes are gaining popularity for their style, function, and fun. Pleasure Way Industries is a leader in the Class B market, and we recently paid the company a visit to learn more about it. Company CEO Dean Rumpel filled us in on the operation. Uh, Pleasure Way Industries is a family-owned and operated company that primarily specializes in building Class B motorhomes and B-plus motorhomes. Pleasure Way Industries was founded in 1986 by my father, Merv Rumpel. Uh, it started off with my dad having a RV dealership in Saskatoon, which we still have for over 40 years. In 1986, he wanted to take on a Class B product line but the lead time to get any product was stretching out to six months when we went to purchase some. So in that time frame, my dad thought, hey, I can build one in six months. So that's how Pleasure Way started. It started off in a very small 5,000 square foot building, starting building by one, and we built, I think, 12 in the first year. But because of his connections within the RV industry, being a long-standing RV dealer already, there was a lot of friends in the business that took our product line on, which has now grown us to becoming one of the largest Class B manufacturers in the industry. Currently today, our product line is much varied than it used to be when we first started. Today we're building on the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, we're building on the Chevy Express van, and we also built a brand new product on the Ford Cutaway, which is now a B+. So we're starting to expand our product line, but we're still principally a B manufacturer and a small motorhome manufacturer which is really our strong suit and our niche. A lot of people choose a Class B because it's very flexible. They can use it as a second car, they can take it on long extended trips and they're getting all the same features they would in a larger RV just in a smaller size. So most of our Class B's are between 20 and 22 feet so they can still park in a metered stall, they can get onto ferries, they can go into places in a lot of national parks now that bigger coaches can't go. A lot of our consumers are already in the RVing lifestyle, so they're now in, into downsize. They don't want to give up the freedom of what they love in RVing, but they don't need to do it in a 40-foot coach anymore. Part of what makes Pleasure Way unique is that we are still one of the very few family-owned and operated RV manufacturers left today. I'm thinking there might only be two or three still left. So that makes us unique is that we're very hands-on and day-to-day -day we're running our own company here, which I think makes us unique today. Also what we've just come out with is a brand new five-year coach warranty. So that was an industry first. We'll back up our coaches for five years or 60,000 miles and uh, we're prepared for that. We believe in the quality of what we do and the people really that build what we make is the secret to our success. Uh, without a great staff believing in what they do and taking pride in how they, what they build, uh, we wouldn't have the product we have and we surely wouldn't have the confidence to back it like we are. To illustrate the company's commitment to quality, Dean showed us around on an enlightening tour of the Pleasure Way facility. So one of our first stops in the production process is our fiberglass department. Here we build all our own molds and we make all our own fiberglass parts. Here we're going to get ready to make our own running board parts. We have some storage compartments. Right now they're laying in hardener before they spray the uh, fiberglass resin and the fiberglass over top of it and then they hand roll it. You need to apply the hardener so that you can remove the part from it, from the mold when it's complete and dry. We make all our own molds in-house and we do all of our own fiberglass in-house, which makes it very unique to our industry. 
So after what we call chop has been sprayed, which is a combination of resin and the fiberglass, we give it a top coat of resin. By rolling all the parts by hand, you ensure you have no air pockets in your fiberglass part. This is our fiberglass finishing department. What we do here, this is where we cut, grind, and hand fit all of our fiberglass components, such as running boards, or uh, corner trims. They all get measured, ground, and fit so they fit precisely with each unit they're going on. We're about to enter our uh, welding shop where we fabricate all our metal. You can see we have a large inventory of steel that we use every day. What's really unique about us is we still weld everything together, which we think adds to a stronger finished product. In this part of the welding shop, we have our jigs, so we precisely make all of our floor frames and our wall frames, which are all welded out of steel. What makes part of our body construction on our Pursuit V Plus line really unique is that we bond all the fiberglass to the steel using a product called Cicaflex. Cicaflex is something we've been using for over a decade already. As you can see, once we lay the sheet down, it's prepped and primed, and then the steel sidewall gets bonded right to it. Once this product is cured, it's pulled up and it's set to the side and it gets ready to go onto the coach where it's all welded together. Is we do not use any screws to hold any of our fiberglass to our body. It's all bonded, so you eliminate thousands of potential places where you could have a leak. We're in our paint shop right now and this piece just came out of the booth. So this is our one piece fiberglass roof that has been painted with automotive paint. You can see it's completely seamless, so there's gonna be no chance of leaks, and the automotive paint is gonna stand up for years, lasting far longer than just a simple gel coat alone. So right now, we're just finishing by putting in more bonding agent, Cicaflex here, where we're gluing the fiberglass onto the steel. We also add a series of wood trusses that add additional strength, and it gives us some place to anchor in our headliners to. So part of the frame assembly when we're building our floor frames is to uh, install our storage compartments. Commonly you'll find them made out of tin or out of plastic, but we use 10 gauge steel. If we're gonna back a product like our 2014 coaches with a five year coach warranty, we wanna make sure what we're building is built to last. We'll continue our visit to Pleasure Way right after a word from our sponsors. Don't touch that dial. starts with pride and ends up being the gold standard in pop-up truck campers or wheel campers need we say more see for yourself by visiting fourwheelcampers.com is your pop-up camper canvas getting a little worse for wear don't fret, just call the friendly folks at Canvas Replacements and their experienced staff will cut and sew you up a new one in no time. Canvas Replacements, your number one source for all your pop-up camper canvas needs. For more information, visit the company website at canvasreplacements.com or call them at 800-232-2079. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Pleasure Way CEO Dean Rumpel is taking us on a tour of his company's factory for an inside look at how his motorhomes are built. In this stage of the production, we're in our subfloor installation and also where we attach all our roofs and our corner panels and rear caps like this. So here's where we're going to uh, bond our front caps, our rear caps onto the coach. We're also going to insulate the coach as well, and we're going to put in all our blocking and our subfloor in that we can attach all our components inside to. What we've done here is we have inserted in all of our plywood into our wall blocking. So we have key points to attach our cabinetry, and we've also put down our plywood subfloor. And we go the extra step here where we actually fill all the screw holes and the seams of the plywood and sand it so that when we glue down our linoleum into the coach, it's going to be perfect, it won't wrinkle, it's not going to curl up and peel down the road. It isn't ready for public viewing quite yet, but Dean hinted about a top secret new model we'd see in his prototype area. 
We're just putting the finishing touches on a brand new prototype and a brand new coach for Pleasureway, which is our first. I can't tell you much, but it is going to debut in Louisville at the RVA show this December. Here we're entering into our cabinet shop. This is where we're going to produce all the individual parts that later will get assembled into the coach itself. As you can see, we have stacks of plywood. Everything is plywood based. We don't use an MDF or particle board in any of our construction. Here we're also going to be making our own cabinet doors out of solid maple. And you'll also get a chance to see the hand sanding and the hand spraying of all the lacquers and what it really takes to make a beautiful cabinet. We manufacture all of our own solid maple cabinet doors. As you can see, as an example, this door here, we take the raw wood, we rip it to our right size, and we put it together using a mortise and tendon joints. So we do not staple our doors together. At the end, they're all glued together, and once it's dried, it'll go through our final sanding phase before it goes to the finishing Here's department. Here's where we're gonna take the raw boards. Here, our CNC router works eight hours a day. It cuts a lot of the individual parts, including our aluminum back flooring that we put down in the pursuit, as well as small individual parts that take intricate time and pieces to cut. Here we hand lay on edge tape to finish off uh, raw edges of plywood. Here's a perfect example of the quality in one of our coaches. This is a, a one piece face frame in the kitchen. So as you can see, it's a solid piece of plywood. We have no joints holding any of the areas together, which means it won't squeak going down the road. It makes it very solid. We use an extensive amount of Corian in all of our coaches, from vanity tops to kitchen countertops, backsplashes, and it's all done right here. The amount of time it takes to go in and polish and sand Corian is tremendous. On average, it's nine or 10 hours per coach alone. In our in-house upholstery department, we assemble all of our own sofa frames. You can see here we've got four inches of memory foam with an ultra leather cover that's gonna go over top. Ultra leather is very durable and will last a long time. So this is the beginning of what we call stall production versus assembly line production. So each coach will go into a stall and the people will come and rotate through the coach. So our cabinet fitter will work for about four and a half days installing the cabinets. Then we're going to have our plumbers and our gas fitters and electricians all work through the coach. What's unique to this coach is we use what's called multiplex wiring. So a lot of the power is put through a Cat5 type cable to separate distribution panels. In the end, we eliminate about 40% of our wiring harness in the coach, which makes it lighter. And we can also troubleshoot things much quicker. We encase all our wires in loom, and then we strap all of the loom. In our steel step wells on our boxes, anywhere there's a seam, we seal all the seams. So you're never gonna have moisture issues and you're never gonna have rust issues down the road. After the uh, product has come down and it's into the finishing phase, we'll perform all of our tests. So we'll test the LP system, we'll water check it all, and we'll also use a, a seal tech machine which will pressurize a complete coach and then soap it down to see if we have any potential places for leaks. We complete two finished units a day, so twice a day, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, our cycle changes and new units come into production and the finished units go out. This is what's going to happen next. The final step is quality control and it's one of the most important in the entire manufacturing process. Here is where our team double checks everybody else's work to make sure it's done right and done right the first time. If we catch any flaws, it goes back into rework and gets corrected. Last but not least, it's shipping. So when a coach leaves the factory here, it's shipped to its dealer, it's always done on a flat deck truck. So our coaches get to the local dealer, it's only usually got about 90 miles on it, which our consumers love to break in their own coaches. The factory tour is impressive, but taking a look at the finished product is even more so. The Pleasure Way Pursuit Motorhome is a fine example of the Class B Plus builder's art. Light tone woodwork accents the Corian countertops we saw being built earlier. The kitchen includes a small sink and two burner stove plus a microwave and dual door refrigerator close to the comfortable U-shaped dinette. The compact bathroom features a functional curved shower enclosure. Storage cabinets are everywhere in the coach. Power window blinds and shades are a nice touch in the bedroom. 
Rich-looking, dark-colored cabinetry complements the light tone upholstery in the company's Sprinter-based Plateau Class B motorhome. Many controls are grouped in one spot. Wardrobe and pantry storage space are built in. The dinette converts to a large bed at night and is close to the shirt closet. The wet bath is small, but it does the job. Driving the Plateau is effortless. As we're entering into our 28th year, we're really excited about all our new products that are coming out and all of our innovations that are continually ongoing here at Pleasure Way. For more information about Pleasure Way Class B Motorhomes, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Exciting great things do come in small packages, like exceptional quality, extreme comfort, and luxurious appointments. You'll find all this and more wrapped up in one beautiful package, the Pleasure Way Pursuit. See for yourself by visiting PleasureWay.com. Weight distribution comes out of the Stone Age. Steel on steel friction is 50 years old. The Sway Pro makes other weight distributing hitches seem, well, prehistoric. The Sway Pro features a softer ride, built-in optimized sway prevention, quiet backing and turning, and little maintenance. Finally, intelligent engineering gives you a much better way to prevent sway and smooth your ride. Why trust an amateur when you can go with a pro? Sway Pro. Safe and secure RV travel is the objective and modifying your trailer's ride height may improve your towing time. If you tow a travel or fifth wheel trailer, you may be under the impression that your trailer sits a little bit too low. Well, this can be anything from a mechanical problem. Um, for example, if you go through dips or bumps in the road, the back end of your trailer hanging too low can cause damage to low hanging equipment like stabilizing jacks, the rear bumper, or even your plumbing, God forbid or it can simply be an annoyance that you don't think it looks very good. We're here at Hitch Pro and Tow in Eugene, Oregon, where the experts are gonna be performing a lift job on a trailer. It can be a pretty simple process sometimes, and in this case, all they're doing is taking the axles from above the leaf springs and moving them below the leaf springs. This raises the whole trailer a few inches, gives a little bit more ground clearance, and uh, frankly, it makes it look pretty good too. So let's follow along and see how it's done. Safety is always first with any shop project. The technicians at Hitch Pro start their job by supporting the trailer's frame with heavy-duty commercial jacks. All four wheels need to be off the ground during this job, and they're removed for easy axle manipulation. First, the U-bolts and spring plates come off and are set aside for reuse. It's a good idea to replace them with new hardware if they're too rusty or worn out. Removing the leaf spring main bolt allows the axle to be dropped from its original location and repositioned below the spring. This bolt uses a knurled retaining system that calls for some hammer encouragement to get things moving, especially when rusty or corroded. The leaf spring is simply reinstalled once the axle is removed. New leaf spring perches are placed loosely on the axle but not yet welded to allow accurate adjustment. Brian reassembles the U-bolts and retainer plate with the axle below the leaf spring. Next, he uses a tape measure to ensure the axle is positioned correctly. This includes the axle's rotation fore and aft as well as accurate side-to-side -side location. After tightening the hardware to specification, there's a final check of the axle position. Once the axle alignment is finalized, the new spring perch is welded in place. On the left is the original axle setup, and on the right, the new spring over axle arrangement. This shot illustrates the old axle height at left and the new position at right. A little bit of spray paint helps to deter rust and corrosion on the new hardware. 
When reattaching the brake wiring, it's a good time to inspect the overall wiring and make any changes needed to ensure reliability and secure electrical continuity. The rear stabilizer jack now has about 12 and a half inches of clearance. Likewise, the plumbing has an honest 12 inches of ground clearance. That's good for peace of mind on uneven terrain. Right here at the wheel well, it's about 29 and a quarter inches compared to what we had before. That's a healthy improvement in clearance. The finished trailer looks great and rides higher. This kind of lift may be just what your trailer needs too for safe and damage free towing. For more information, see your local fabrication shop or log on to our website at rollinontv.com. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. Hi, this is Terrell, the Clever Chick, and I'm here with another quick tip on how to live fabulously in a small space. Do you ever wonder why your crackers get soggy or you get mildew on the inside of your shoes? This is quite common in small spaces, whether you're in your tiny home, your RV or a trailer. What happens is when there's an imbalance between temperatures, hot and cold, that's what creates the condensation. So almost all of us have experienced it in our car. We're just getting it on a much bigger level when we're living in a trailer because we've got our kitchens and our bathrooms besides just the body heat that we create. What you want is a tool that will allow you to remove some of that moisture from the air. In the case of trailers, dehumidifiers are a really great solution to this problem. An inexpensive, low-tech solution is using the granules that will absorb the moisture from the air and then release the water into a collection pool underneath. Now what's great about this is first, it's inexpensive, it's easy to set up, and this is one of the options that you can use when your trailer isn't in use and you're not necessarily plugged up to electricity. That's important to remember, even if you're not using your trailer, you still want to protect against that imbalance. So this is great. Just set it up, occasionally check it to empty the moisture, and refill the granules as needed. If you're looking for a chemical-free dehumidifying solution, there are several eco-friendly products on the market. Now these involve recirculating the air and so require that you have a working plug-in. There are many models that you can find. What's important is that you select one that's sized appropriately to the cubic square footage of the area that you'll be using it in. One of the easiest ways to increase the air circulation in your trailer is just to make some small changes in how you maintain your living space. For instance, it's a good idea just to crack your cabinets a little bit, just so that air can circulate, especially if it's a cabinet that contains food, foodstuffs or other materials such as papers that might trap moisture. Another quick solution is use your air vents that you have. You can open those up Especially if you're cooking and you're generating steam, open up your vent so it goes outside. When you're through cooking, close it up. That'll still keep some of the heat in and you'll be comfortable. Also, on a sunny day, you can always crack your windows just a bit to let some of the interior air out and that will allow that balance to occur. Those are my tips for keeping the moisture low in your trailer or small space and keeping your crackers crunchy. For additional information on anything you saw on this week's show, along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com.